Hey guys, how are you today? So while I'm spraying my watercolor paints down and re-wetting them, we will have a little chat. So if you are watching this on YouTube, the actual painting part of this is going to be a speed through. If you want the talkie tutorial, then you need to be part of my creative year over in Facebook, which is an art one of the two art groups I have over in Facebook. The link for both groups will be in the description below. That being said, we are in that group, My Creative Year, discussing color this year. And this month we are exploring complementary colors, which are opposite each other on the color wheel. And for this speed through, or for My Creative Year tutorial, um, we are going to play with painting in my lips journal um, which if you've been following me on social media, I finished up my eyeball journal uh, a few months ago and I've now started a journal of just lips. Some are good, some are, you know, they're a little study painting, so it's fine. <laughs> um, anyway, I thought we would do one sort of outside the box, which I really wasn't going to do in this journal, but I'm, I think it's going to be a fun experiment. And we're going to do one in non-traditional colors um, using the complementary colors on the color wheel. I really think I'm going to do like purple and it's complement, opposite complement is yellow um, for the highlight color. I, I believe at this moment that's what I'm going to do. I could go with a red violet and yellow green which is also a possibility. I don't know exactly yet but anyway you'll find out with me in just a minute. So let's get started shall we? Alrighty, so I have a pair of lips um, up on my iPad. Let me make my iPad so it doesn't turn itself off. Um, after my last live broadcast where I shared my lips journal and did a few paintings, I did a number of you send in your photographs of your lips, which was great. And so I'm going to use one of those for inspiration for today's painting. I do think on the color, look, I got out one of my color wheels and to find your complementary colors, they would be opposite each other on the color wheel. So if you want to go with say a blue color, opposite would be yellow orange uh, for a blue violet. If you want more of a tealy blue, the opposite would be more of a red orange. So I do think we're going to go with a red violet and a yellow green. I think I'm cringing you can't see that but we're gonna try that and I have my I've re-wetted my paints I've got some tubes here just in case including my white um, titanium white I've got some water my standard three brushes my half inch flat and a couple of rounds a number four and a number eight round and we're gonna see what happens I'm going to start first with the half inch flat grab my rag I'm gonna wet the paper I do have two palettes out. I have a floral cobalt palette, which is mostly bright colors. It's Jane Davenport, Holbein, some Daniel Smith, Winsor Newton, Van Gogh, um, PBO, like it's a mixture of paints. And then I've got the flesh tone palette out. Uh, so I do think I'm gonna start with flesh tone for the background, although we are gonna sort of veer off. Since this person is Caucasian, we're gonna use our sort of Caucasian-y flesh tone color here. I'm gonna put a little bit on the, because, uh, on the paper, and because the paper is wet, it's gonna immediately start bleeding around and blo blooming and moving around. And I'm gonna just help it along by pushing it around with the paintbrush. I'm not too concerned about losing white space because I am not one of these watercolor purists. I have no problem with going back in with a white gel pen or the titanium white paint um, at the end and adding highlights back in if we need to. Okay, I actually do need to plug the um, dryer in because that I will need, hang on. Okay, if you haven't seen my um, live broadcast where I talk about the lips journal, I really am trying to um, do things normally, um, normally when I work with watercolor, I start lighter and you work your way darker because you can't really take it back. I'm really experimenting with doing things the other way around with the lips journal and actually adding in the dark shadows and then working my way, um, to the lighter colors, which is a uh, more challenging, but it's been a lot of fun. 
So that being said, we're gonna use the red violet for our shadow color. So I'm gonna grab, um, Oh, good question. I have two choices here. I have Jane Davenport's Mystic and Daniel Smith Cobalt Violet. I think I'm going to start with Cobalt Violet, although I think I'm going to want the Jane Davenport color. Um, and let's see. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint in or sort of map out the shadow between these lips. And these lips are pursed as if into a shape of a kiss. And so I'm going to add some paint and then I'm gonna get back in with my brush with just water, move the paint around. All of our lips, young or old, have lines, so I like to try to suggest the lines. So when you're working with um, colors other than black and white to suggest your shadows and highlights, you know, your cool colors, blues, purples, um, some of your greens, they are good shadow colors. And then your warm colors, red, yellow, orange, those are great highlight colors. So I'm gonna switch to the Jane Davenport Mystic. Cause yeah, I do think we want some of that in here. This brush actually may not be small enough for what I wanna do, but we'll see. Well, again, rinsing my brush off and then pushing the paint around with some water. I am wetting the brush and getting clean water, but I'm also not wanting it to be sloppy wet, so I am constantly tapping the brush off on a rag that's right in front of me. Okay, so now we're gonna go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So do we want to go with, um, let's grab Lemonade, which is a light pink. This is a Jane Davenport color, so it's um, in, my experience, they're more opaque than your traditional normal watercolors. But for this kind of um, uh, painting, I, I've found that it's nice to use a combination of opaque and transparent colors and experiment with layering them over each other and mixing as you see them doing right now to create an interesting painting. Okay, now we're gonna dry that. Should probably get a little dish out because I might need it. Okay, we're gonna stick with our small brush and I am going to grab some of the cobalt violet. Oops. And I'm gonna sort of mix it with, oh, it's gonna mix with the colors that are on here, which is fine. I'm going to use it for sort of my lighter transition color. Well, I should say lighter shadow color. That makes more sense. Let's 
the brush, blend out the colors, move them around. Sometimes you want the marks that the brush and the paint leaves. The Daniel Smith's paints really granulate really well and um, create interesting texture to the painting, but sometimes you don't want that. So again, this is a great experiment with figuring out what parts of that that you do like and what you don't. So that's a good color kind of the color that was on here is was some of that lemonade mixed with the flesh color and then mixing it with the Daniel Smith cobalt violet um, I made a nice sort of transition color that's the other thing don't be afraid to experiment with color playing with color combinations I'm just adding like light, very light suggestions of where the skin around the mouth is wrinkled up in a pursed lips. Let's go back into that Jane Davenport Mystic, which is a much darker purple. Again, mixing it with the other colors that are on the palette that already go with the painting that we're working on. Making some marks and suggestions. Referencing the photo, suggesting the shadows and the lines in the lips. Some of this I'll blend out and some I won't. This is especially good practice if you have some new um, watercolors or other materials in your art room that you are unfamiliar with. It's fun to do some of these little sort of study paintings. I've talked about this before in the art groups and in my YouTube channel. Um, it helps you get a handle on you know what the materials will or won't do. Okay, I'll dry that. Okay, for our highlight color, I do think we'll probably add some white, but um, this um, floral cobalt palette has this bright color, Jane Davenport's Jiminy, which is a bright yellowy green. So we're going to grab a little bit of that. It's very pigmented, so I want to be careful about how much I put on. I'm looking at the places on the lips that have the highlights where that light is shining. I'm going to put a little bit of the paint and then I'm going to just grab a clean wet brush and move it around. It'll probably kind of, uh, it may, it may, because of the choice of colors, it may look like she's been eating flowers, which is actually kind of funny.
So I've just grabbed the teeniest, tiniest bit of that green. You don't really need a lot. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I love to do faces and things with non-traditional colors. I'm actually not a huge fan of working with flesh tones. Okay, that's pretty good. So now we're gonna go in and I'm gonna go, just like I've done with the other ones, I'm gonna go straight in with the titanium white. Actually, I'm gonna dry this first. And we're gonna go straight in with that titanium white. Actually, I think I want a smaller brush. Let's get the little tiny one. And you might want the little scrubby one that I've been using. So this is a number one round. This is a Princeton um, Aqua Elite. Okay, and I am going to again look at where the highlights are on the lips. You can also use the white to sort of clean up some of the edges if you need to. Which is where I the scrubber usually comes in. Where I want to maybe not cover it up completely, but I want to disguise some of the edges where I've kind of gone gone off crazy. actually a pretty good pair of lips if I do say so myself. There we go. So another pair of lips for the lips journal but using non-traditional colors for the shadows and some of the highlights. Uh, in this case, complementary colors of red, violet, and yellow, green. So I would love to see what you can do. Like with this painting, you don't have to do a whole painting with just those two colors. You can, of course. Um, but you can just use them to um, accentuate what you're already doing with your painting. And I would love to see what you do. Okay, that's it for this quick little video and tutorial. If you are following me on social media and you do a pair of lips using complementary colors for your shadows and highlights, I would love to see what you do um, or another painting. You don't have to, like I did, just use only those colors. I didn't. Um, you can, of course, but you can use um, them in a painting to instead of black or white or in addition to black or white to suggest your highlights and shadows. I would love to see what you do. Um, if you wanna follow me over on My Creative Year and see the full talking tutorial, if you're watching this speed through on YouTube, the link is in the description below. Uh, I would appreciate a like, share, and subscribe. Give it a thumbs up if you will. Don't forget to support the free content here on YouTube and over in the Facebook art groups. Not just mine, but all of your favorite creators. Uh, we all have mostly ways to support, whether it's an Etsy shop or a PayPal tip jar or Amazon affiliate link or something. So check out my video description and then also go to your other favorite creators and check out their video description and see what they have in the way of supporting their channel and the free content. Because it takes a lot of work to put these videos out, just FYI. Um, and you know, that's it. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay creative. Uh, 
Let's start a conversation about complementary colors. If you're using them in your work, I would love to have that conversation with you over in the Facebook art groups. And uh, yeah, go out and have a great day and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye guys.